My name is Claire Fuller. I am the Public Programs Manager here at Hillwood Estate Museum and Gardens. Uh, so thank you all for joining us for this virtual um, floral design workshop today. Um, this workshop is um, called From the Garden to Your Vase, so it's focused on uh, garden, um, garden plants for um, this arrangement. Uh, so we hope that uh, all of you in the DC area can visit us sometime in person soon to explore the lush gardens, our newest exhibition, Glass Art Beauty Design, and join us for some upcoming summer evening programming in the gardens. Uh, that includes dance performances, musical performances, uh, things like that. You can find more information and purchase tickets on our website at hillwoodmuseum.org. Um, our next floral design workshop is on Friday, October 27th, and that one will be um, focused on chrysanthemums. So uh, I'll go ahead and drop those links in the chat, the one to the uh, virtual, uh, the next virtual design workshop, as well as some of our upcoming in-person programs. So you'll be able to access those. Um, so before we jump in today, just a couple of quick notes. Uh, our wonderful floral and event decor designer, Amy Wilbur, will be arrange building an arrangement on camera, step-by-step uh, -step and stop for questions along the way. The demo will take just about 45 minutes. So via the chat feature at the bottom of your screens, uh, you're welcome to submit any questions that you may have through as they cross your mind throughout the workshop. Um, after the demo, uh, I'll invite you all to stay for a show and tell if you wanted to show your arrangements to the rest of the group. Um, so anyone who's interested is welcome to do that at the end. You're also welcome to keep your camera on throughout the program or just at the end, whatever you're most comfortable with. Uh, so uh, thank you all for listening to my little intro here. And now I will go ahead and pass it over to Amy to begin the demo. Great. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Claire. Welcome to August and welcome to this workshop today uh, from the cutting garden is our theme. And right now, if you're in the DC area, uh, the flowers that we're using are all things that should be in bloom uh, in your garden or in uh, gardens around town that you can see. And actually the material that we got today, they are all things that we have in our cutting garden, but because of the volume of which we are um, bringing in for this workshop, they are not actually from the cutting garden except for the sea oats. But otherwise, they are all from Woolham Gardens, which is a local garden that is in Culpeper, Virginia. Uh, they also have their uh, setup at the Duke Park Farmers Market on Sundays, and I think maybe other couple farmers markets in the area. But I love working with Bob Woolham and uh, his team there. They always produce such beautiful flowers for us to use for our arrangement. So again, these are all things that are in bloom right now in the DC region and are in bloom in our cutting garden. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by showing um, how we prep our containers. Uh, just a little side note that we always use chicken wire instead of coral foam because it is more sustainable. It helps uh, keep the blooms lasting longer. And I actually find that it's an easier thing to use than uh, the floral foam, which is actually just styrofoam as well, which we don't want to have to use. So again, it's a nice long piece of chicken wire. I take this and I make it into a tube and then I just kind of scrunchy in the sides and then I put it into the container. And I just kind of like smush it in there I like to make sure that there is sort of like the top and the bottom of the chicken wire so that it can, the stems can connect into two different spots. Uh, we have a lovely sort of ceramic uh, type base for today because I thought that would be kind of fun for a uh, garden design. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my chicken wire down so that it doesn't out. I just use a clear floral tape. That way you don't really see it on the base and it still does the purpose. I like to run the tape around the top of the container. And then you can see I have like a little X with the tape. Uh, again, you'll notice, let me just my camera down a bit. There we go. Okay, so the um, 
my container you can see is rotating because I have it on this wonderful lazy Susan. And I find this to be a very helpful tool, especially when you're doing an all sided arrangement like we're going to be doing today. It just uh, allows you to move your arrangement around without having to like physically move it. All right, so after you have your container prep, the next most important thing is that we're going to go in and we're going to fill it with water. Uh, this is just regular tap water. I don't put anything in it. But if you get those little full packs um, when you have your uh, flowers, definitely go ahead and use that if you'd like to do that as well. Okay, so again, we are all set to go. Uh, I like to have a couple of principles when I start off doing any kind of floral design. That is, you always wanna sort of make sure that your arrangement is not gonna be any taller or wider then one and a half times your container. And that just gives you um, a good visual balance, but then also it helps for the stability of the arrangement, uh, especially um, when you have uh, containers that are kind of smaller or more delicate, you don't wanna have something that's gonna be super big that could easily set it off balance. So this is a relatively sturdy container, this ceramic one that we have. So I'm not gonna be quite as worried about if it's uh, one and a half times the height, I'm not gonna take a ruler or anything like that. So uh, just to kind of preview our flowers that we have today, we have zinnias, we have dahlias, we have cosmos, which are these, have Becchia, the scout here, which I love. And then for our greenery, I always love incorporating herbs. So we have basil for today. And then for our little touch of whimsy that I like to always do at the end, we have these sea oaks. And again, if you picked up materials from Hillwood, these are actually from property. Everything else though is from the book. Okay, so like I said, I always like to go in uh, sort of with my greenery first. So today I'm gonna be using this basil. And again, I like to use uh, any kind of herbs, especially this time of year, because it just adds an amazing scent to your arrangement. Like this basil smells absolutely amazing. So if you don't have basil, you can always use mint, you can use oregano, just something that you might have in your garden or something that you might be able to pick up at the farmer's market. Also, parsley works really nicely, so does rosemary. But again, it's kind of a fun thing to have um, in your arrangement, especially when you're talking about having an arrangement from the garden. Okay, so the one thing I like to always do is I'm gonna clip everything at a nice sharp 45 degree angle. And that way, you get um, more surface area for your stem for it to drink up the water. Because we're gonna do an all-sided arrangement, I'm gonna start at the middle of my container with my greenery, and I'm gonna put everything in at a slight angle. I'm not gonna put everything in straight up and down, and that way it's just gonna give it a more of a natural kind of look. Uh, the, I guess, sort of, goal for today is to create something that looks like you just sort of effortlessly walked out into your garden, pick some things and then just, you know, whimsically flip, uh, threw it into a container with no effort whatsoever, even though we know it's going to be like 45 minutes. Again, um, so I'm going to use this as sort of my architectural points to understand how tall and how wide my arrangement is going to be. I'm going to start in the middle because it's going to be all sided. And then I'm going to work my way around to do all sides of it. Again, I want my arrangement to be kind of asymmetrical and again, very sort of loose feeling. Like again, it's coming out of the garden. Uh, one of the other uh, purposes of greening first is that it's going to then kind of give a little bit more cushion for when you are putting in the rest of your blooms. It has something to kind of sit on. As you can see, I'm kind of pulling off any of the stems that are a little bit brown or not looking quite as fun and as fresh.
And again, I'm just kind of going in from the center and now I'm working my way out. And typically if you are growing basil for your garden, you never want it to get to this tall, leggy blooming stage because that is when it is sort of done growing or done producing its leaves. And typically people want basil for the leaves, not necessarily for the flowers, but for our purposes, we want to use the flowers. All right, so this is my last piece of basil that I'm going to put in, and I'm going to kind of put this right into the center here. So I think it just needs to. Okay, so she got a little bigger than I had anticipated, but I think that's okay. All right, so I'm just gonna chop off sort of the bottom so you can see more of what's going on here. All right, so I have greened my container with my herb, and now I'm gonna go in for my next and what I like to do is I always like to use uh, my blooms that are gonna take up the most amount of real estate. So for today, that's gonna be our dahlia. And this moves over to the side for a second. So this dahlia has a lot going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim down and I'm gonna take off all of this sort of extraneous growth and leaves. So that I just have the dahlia. I'm going to hold on to these because these are going to be really kind of fun and I'm going to use them as well. But for my purposes right now, I'm going to trim down my dahlia so I have this. I'm going to start creating a grid pattern by making this triangle using odd numbers of three, five, and seven. And what that's going to do is it's going to let me triangulate off of each flower uh, so that when you're first starting to arrange, sometimes it helps to have a visual pattern so that you can see where things need to go. So I'm gonna start down closer to the base. And if you are not comfortable with just sort of packing at your stems willy-nilly, like what I am doing with mine, you can always measure your stem. So right now, a little hard to see, you can't see, but I have my stem touching the base, uh, my lazy Susan. So I know that if this is the height that I want it, I'm going to then measure it off of the container and then I'll know exactly how high or how tall it's gonna be. Okay, so I've done one side. I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Again, I'm gonna clip off all of this sort of extraneous stuff on here. I'm gonna keep it though. And again, I want this to be a relatively low point. And I want it to be kind of close. So I'm gonna cut it short. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these two as my anchor and I'm gonna think one, two, and I'm gonna put the third one here, and now I've created a little triangle. So again, I'm keeping all of this stuff that I'm clipping off, because I do wanna use it for later. And if you see any sort of imperfections, you can always just pluck them out gently. And again, you can see I'm putting everything in at an angle, I'm not going straight up. 
So now what I was talking about with this triangle pattern is you can see I have one, two, three. And what that allows for is then I can be like, all right, I'm gonna make another triangle and I'm gonna use it over here. And I can then start filling in all of these different triangles. Again, I'm holding on to all of this stuff, just putting that aside for now. But right now I'm focusing in on my dollar. I want another dahlia to come up here. I'm gonna choose this little bit. This one's a little bit smaller. But I don't want it to be the same height as this one. So I wanna keep everything different heights and different depths, which will just give it a little bit more of that natural sort of garden feel. All right, so I'm gonna go in with another dahlia. I'm gonna put her up over here. to do a really tall one. So I'm actually going to take this one that I have here and instead of clipping off these little buds, I'm going to leave those on there because this is going to be my tallest balloon. And I want it to look again a little bit more natural, a little bit more garden like. So that's why I'm going to leave on the greenery for that. And so this gal is going to come all the way up here. I don't know. I've made this too tall, but you can kind of see that it's this way. And then again, I like having the leaves and stuff on here because it feels a little bit more like the way it would be in a garden. And now I have this sort of empty space here that I'll go in and fill it in with another dahlia. And then I'm just gonna add this empty spot here. I'm just gonna go in with my last dahlia that I wanna use for now. And again, these ones have these funny little antennas on them. I'm gonna leave those for now. I can always come back and flip them off if I think they're a little too much. But that's the other thing that's great about the chicken wire is you can always kind of come in and adjust. So I happen to have these very dark dahlias. I know that some people probably have different colored dahlias. Maybe you don't even have all the same color dahlia. But you're going to do the same sort of patterning, whether you have all the same color dahlias or not. Does anyone have any questions about what I just did with my dahlias so far? We're good? Okay, so I still have um, two dahlias that are left over, but I'm just going to hang on to those for now. So the next thing that I'm going to do, oh, I found more basil that for just a second, is I'm going to go in with my Rebecca because some of my Rebecca, as you can see, is again very large and it again is taking up space. I'm going to take off all of the leaves off of my Rebecca um, just because I don't want them on there. And now because I've made these sort of triangle areas, I can then start to fill in the gaps with other flowers, like right in here. I know I can then go in with my Rebecca. 
Amy, we have a quick question. Of course. Uh, what is the name of the flower farm in Culpeper? Wollum Gardens. It's W O L L A M, Wollum Gardens. And you can see some of these are in different stages of opening. So I want to have all of those. I want to have the different stages of bloom for the Rubecchia because they'll last, you know, a little bit longer. They'll be different sizes, that kind of thing. And again, I'm taking my Rubecchia and I'm bringing it outside slightly of my dahlias. You can kind of see in this perspective of it. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to create some depth. So I'm using my dahlias as my pieces that are gonna be at one level. And then I'm gonna come in, take the next level and have them come in and out as well. So something like this, where I have two of them kind of connected together, I'm gonna to keep that. I'm not gonna break them. And I like kind of curve of this. So I'm gonna bring her up over here and I'm gonna leave her my cloth as well. And I have that. And again, I'm gonna start playing off of my same concept of odd numbers. And I'm gonna just kind of go in figure out different spots. Now, again, this one, you know, she's got three little blooms on here. I love it. So I'm actually gonna put this one up a little bit higher as well. I think I'm gonna put this one up here. Because then what this is doing, oops, not like that. Is as you can see, like what it's doing in nature is it's giving us different levels. So I'm actually going to take this one that was over here and just kind of swing her off to this side now. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, filling in with this beautiful Rebecca. Well, these always remind me of summer. It's such a fun, fun flower. I love them so much. And again, I'm putting some down a little bit lower and some up higher. I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna fill this in over at the top here. I also like the chicken wire because you can kind of like see where stuff is going. Okay, I'm gonna fill in with two more. And then I'm gonna move on to my city. Okay, so again, I'm gonna just pull this back a little bit so you can see kind of the height of what's going on. But again, it's like the different heights, the different depths, so it really has that kind of natural feel to it. All right, so are there any questions so far? We feeling good? All right. So now um, 
I do like how this is so, how she's so droopy. So I'm gonna put her over here real quick. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my zinnias. I'm gonna take off any of the leaves from my zinnias. And now I'm gonna go in with these and start to fill in some of these bald spots down here. Because if you can kind of see, you can kind of like see how it's a little bit empty up in here through the middle. So I'm gonna take my zinnias and I'm gonna to start to fill in those spaces. So I'm gonna put these down closer to the base. Now, if you have a zinnia like this one, you can see like some of the petals have started to come off already. What I like to do is, you know, instead of getting rid of this, I'm gonna pluck off the petals. Then I have this really fun, Kind of like little ball. So I think that that's cute. So I'm going to use that. I'm not going to just let her get thrown away. I'm going to end up using that as like a little thing. I might actually put this one again, you know, down a little bit closer to the base. And this is just giving it, see it right there. It's just giving it a little bit of texture. So again, you can always use like all parts of these flowers. Again, if you have any flowers that have some brown edges or brown petals, you can always just kind of pluck those out because the zinnias do have so many petals that you can afford to get rid of some of the petals. So again, I am taking my zinnias and I am putting them somewhat lower into my arrangement to start to fill in some of that space. Because you also don't want your arrangement to be too sort of stemmy, and you don't really want to see necessarily all of and typically we're using greenery to hide that, but because the basil was more about the flowers instead of the greens, we still have some empty spaces that I would like to kind of fill in. And again, because we have such an abundance of flowers, we can just use the flowers to fill in those areas instead of the greens. So again, you can see that I'm putting them in closer and I'm starting to make it feel a little bit full. I think that this gal is quite lovely. So I'm not going to hide her. I'm gonna showcase her up here. So that you can't even see that. Right? So she's up there. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go in with just a couple more of these. And again, if your zinnias are a little bit smushied, you can just kind of pluck them up a little bit. So just gently hold the head so you don't snap the head. And then you can just kind of pluck the petals back in. So again, I'm just starting to fill in some of these spaces here that don't look quite as full. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do after I finish with my last zinnia is I'm gonna go in with these dahlia greens that I held on to. So I'm gonna do one more zinnia right there. So now, um, 
like I said, I have some of these buds and some of these greens, which are kind of fun. And I'm going to use those to then start again filling in some of these spaces. So you can kind of see, when you're looking up close at it, you can see those steps, right? You can see those in there. And I don't necessarily want to see all of that. So I'm going to use these buds, these little dahlia greens, and I'm going to just start to fill in with them so that I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a, you know, instead of a ground cover, this is like a stem cover for, for it. And it'll be fun because some of the dahlia, um, the dahlia buds will actually uh, bloom uh, given some time. Starting to get a little tight in here. Jam packed. So, like something like this. This should, in theory, go into some point. So, that'll be kind of fun. So, I'm going to tuck that in there. Ooh, that basil is so ripe. It smells so good. I like this one also. Again, like this area needs a little bit of filling in. Amy, I've got another question for you. Of course. Uh, how would you change your approach with all the heights if you were doing a vase that would be against a wall? Um, for example, if you wouldn't see the back of it. So I would do it the same way, but I would start from the back. No, I can't explain this. All right, so if this is your container that you have. I would start instead of in the middle, like I did for the all-sided arrangement, I would start at the back because you want the... Um, the feel of the arrangement to still be dimensional. So you wanna make sure that that back is not just like a flat, you know, kind of a thing that when you turn it to the side, it's like this. You still want it to look like it has volume, but not so much that it's going to be interfering with the wall. But you wanna start from the back and then kind of fill in from the front. And again, you want to have short pieces in the back and long pieces in the back so that you are giving it that dimensional feel. And it's not that like straight sort of uh, flat back area. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I feel like I'm good with filling in my necessary areas with um, extra dahlia greens. And what I want to do next is go in. with my last piece of basil, because I just found this, so I'm gonna put this in. And then I'm gonna go in and I wanna talk about the cosmos a little bit. So some of these cosmos, you can see have already faded out. So that I have some stems that are just the little pods. But again, I like this look of the little pods. And to me, it feels very much like what the actual garden looks like because you don't have every single flower in bloom in the garden all the time. But then you have sort of the remnants or the um, little shells of what used to be flowers. So I want to add these in again as sort of textural elements into my arrangement. that's not your thing, you don't have to do that. I just personally think that it does add a little bit of interest and I like it in the arrangement. Now, of course, if you do have blooms on it, that's wonderful as well. And then you can add those in. 
you want these to be kind of coming out from the arrangement a bit. You don't want them to be smooshied in there, but you want these again to be, you know, like your last, one of your last layers of texture so that it's giving it again, a little bit more volume and a little bit more of that kind of airy feeling. But I think that they're right, you can't see that. But see, you can see like the this is just kind of a pod that's left. But I think that it adds a fun little element of different texture to your arrangement. And again, I'm just going around. And I'm letting these kind of stick out from the arrangement a little bit. I have this tall one, this tall guy up in here at the middle. And then I'm just gonna add one more in. I feel like there's just this one spot here that needs a little something, just a little something. That's actually broken, so I'll snip that off. Okay, so then when I feel like I have all of the little wispy gestures, everything that I want. Oh, look at this little teeny tiny guy. I'm gonna put this in. No flower gets left behind. All right, I have one more. Okay, so again, once I feel like I have everything that I could possibly want in my arrangement, I'm then gonna go in and see if I need to add in anything else, because I still have some flowers left over. I have one Rubecchia that is absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna I see the spot already where I wanna add that in. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like a little bit of a, what I'm calling a bald spot. It's not really that bald, but I'm going to add in there. Okay, so I've added that in. I think I'm just going to do one more. One more, Rebecca. Over right in here. I just want to have it at a different height. All right. I could put more in, but I'm not going to. I'll just, I'll stop. You'd be amazed at how much stuff I could put into a container. But the next thing I want to do is I want to add in my last little wispy gesture. And these are the sea oats. And I love the sea oats so much because they have so much movement. If there's like a slight breeze, you'll see like movement with it. So it's really kind of fun. And it gives it just that extra last little amazing flare. So I want one that's going to be up higher than the rest of my arrangement. You can see it just kind of shaking around right there. I'm only going to use three of these. It doesn't need too, too much. I'm taking off the green 
leaves of this. Um, you can leave them on, but I just prefer to strip them off that. And again, I'm gonna do this as a three, and I'm gonna have it be in a triangle. So I have one, two, and then I'm going to have three over here. What do we want to be front? Let's have this be front. So I'm going to do my last one over here. You know what? We have four. So I'm going to use all four of them. I'm not going to just leave the last one behind. So, <laughs> never mind. So it feels like it's a little bit lopsided over here. So I'm going to do my last one right here. Yeah, let's do it right here. So then, Feel like I am done with that. I'm going to try and take this off. That's too short. Doing a little bit of tricky. Camera work. All right. So there you can see that it's got that really fun movement with the sea oats. And again, the, the little Cosmo pods, I think, really add like a fun element and texture to it as well. So I'm going to just move this up so you can have a better. Look at that. Like so. And like so. All right. And that is your arrangement. What questions do we have? Are we just busily working away? Uh, I do have a nice comment uh, here from Kimberly, Amy. She says, uh, oh my goodness, Amy, gorgeous. I am hosting a bridal shower brunch at my house tomorrow, and this is going to be front and center at the front door. I am so going to look like a pro. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And again, I feel like anything, um, you know, that you have uh, in terms of, you know, like a party, like a dinner, whatever, it really just gives you that like last little element of like really elevating anything even if it's just you know a snack that you're having in front of your uh, Netflix and binge kind of thing you still look very classy and it's all elevated with a uh, with a fun floral arrangement all right I'm going to move this over to the side now there all right that wasn't too bad okay Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Amy. Um, now that we have finished our demo here, is there anyone who has any additional questions um, or uh, who would like to show and tell today? You can just raise your hand if you'd like. Oh, perfect. Here I see Cynthia. I'll go ahead and I'm do I'm a retired teacher. I'm doing this to help other people feel like they can <laughs> go too. I'm not sure how it looks. I had several that the stems had bent, so I've got lots of my little things like this around so that oh, I can. Perfect. So I'm using <laughs> these are going to float. My mother used to float things. This is my I don't know. It's not like yours, but it's my first. <laughs> I think it looks gorgeous. It's you know it's like what. Like the ultimate goal is to make it feel like you just plucked out a bunch of flowers and put it into a vase. And it's supposed to look kind of effortless, a little bit, 
you know, a little bit messy, a little bit chaotic, but again, kind of just invoking the feeling of a cutting garden. And your certainly does that as well. So I think it looks like Thank wonderful. you. Now I hope someone else will go. <laughs> <laughs> happy to. Wonderful. Let's see here. Just one moment. Uh, sorry, could you raise your hand again? I'm behind my... <laughs> oh, I see you now. <laughs> there you are, Rosie. All right. Oh, so, wonderful. Okay, Amy, I don't know. I really don't know how to do this, but all right. Here's what we're going to do. And I think like the camera part is like the trickiest part. It's taken me quite a while to figure out how to manipulate the camera so that you can see okay. it. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. Gorgeous. Should oh, like it's so fun. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Once again, thank you, Amy. This is, you know, your classes are just absolutely amazing. So I oh, thank you. Yeah. not to miss any. But um, yeah, the next class is not until October. Correct. <laughs> it's just one month off. <laughs> I know. You need it. You deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share today? Okay. <laughs> well, oh, looks like, let's see, I don't see a first name here, but Perez M, would you like to share today? Hi. We, <laughs> we have two. Do you want to show yours? Yes. We just don't have the same flowers that you have. <laughs> oh. No, nice. but those are gorgeous. We just got what we have from the garden. <laughs> and except, except the dahlias that we bought. Them. Well, that's wonderful. Here we have this. Oh, they're gorgeous. I always love seeing when people don't actually get the materials from us, you know, what it is that they come up with and create. And I think that, you know, especially this time of year, really anything that you find is going to be amazing. But those look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, share their arrangement today? Okay. Well, thank you all so much for coming today. Um, again, uh, I've gone ahead and shared the link to Amy's next uh, virtual floral design workshop in October, um, as well as the link to all of our other Hillwood programming if you wanted to check that out. Uh, so again, thank you all for coming today. Uh, you're welcome to reach out if there uh, you have any questions, uh, but today was lovely. Thank you so much, Amy, for another beautiful arrangement. And I hope you all have a lovely Friday afternoon and a wonderful week. Weekend. Thanks so much. Bye.